And in fact, I'm just going to wait till a few people come, well, as many people can come in as possible before we actually start. But this is my new board. I'm so excited. I'm actually going to sell them. I'm going to have them made a bit longer because this was a bit short they came up with. And I've said, no, I want it a bit longer. I think that was my fault. So it's nice and heavy. And it's got, look, and it's got these um, things. So it's off, the, off there. So it won't move. I don't have to have a cloth underneath it which is very important. So I'm always putting damp cloths under my board. And also when it's a bit damp, it sort of smells. So it's a really great board and it's got grooves here where you can really lift it up easily. But it is quite heavy actually. Anyway, I'm gonna be selling those eventually, which would be cool. So um, I'm very excited about tonight because it's so delicious. But I do hope um, there's lots of kids involved as well, which would be such fun. So basically, welcome to Rosemary's Kitchen or Cook Along. It doesn't really matter what it is. Or Saturday night supper or whatever. Or Saturday night dinner. It doesn't matter. So basically, it's cooking in my kitchen. So welcome. Um, so what are we going to be doing today? We're going to be doing the most delicious, delicious um hamburgers but made of chicken so they're curry they're really pecan -y. they're absolutely delicious and we're going to make our own tomato ketchup oh i can't tell you it's really good and you know making it yourself is so nice so we're going to do that then we're going to make some slaw which uh is better almost the next day but you make it now it's made with a lemon it's sort of almost it's sweet and sour which is what i love so i like the sweet and sour side so and then we will and then we're going to do the burgers so that's the, that's the sort of order so we're going to do ketchup ketchup first then slaw then burgers so um because i the ketchup really needs to cool down so what i'm going to do Okay, no, I'm not going to start yet. I'm going to wait until you all come on, and as many as you can come on as possible. So what I'm going to do is just literally leave it for a couple of minutes now and just chat. If anybody wants a question, um, I'm, I'm sorry for those um, with the last, last week when I did it. I was really, I changed my mind. Well, the reason I changed my mind those don't already know is because I felt it was more children orientated this weekend as it was half term. So I've now looked at the dates and I've, I've now changed the actual uh, route, the sort of routine, the sort of schedule of the dishes, which I think is really important, like Mother's Day. Mothering Sunday, I'm doing a delicious rhubarb and custard tart. So that'll be really delicious. And then um, things like that. And for, for Easter, I think I'm doing something like a lovely navarana of lamb, which is so useful, which we can cook together and you can have on, on Easter Sunday. So basically, these sort of things. So, but welcome to those who haven't joined me before. So welcome. So please just, this is very informal. This is just telling you how to do things, helping you cook along with me. And if there's any questions you've got to ask, somebody is here ready to basically, my son here is ready to answer your questions or at least ask me to answer your questions, which will be good. So um, we're not going to, I need to know now, how there's quite a few people on? Don't tell me how many, but are there quite a few? Uh, yes, yes, we are. We're ready to go. Chef. Are we ready to go? Okay, cool. Right, let's get my chair back. So let's all go. Right, tomato sauce. Oh, tomato ketchup. This is the first thing we've got to achieve. So we have here oil rapeseed oil or olive oil and what i'm going to do is in fact I, what i'll do is pop it in here this little bowl flour in there then i'm going to put the oil i'm going to make a roux with the oil and the flour okay so we'll take a little bit of a take a spoon and really make it so it's a little bit of oil so it's the first thing you do so it's like just like a roux as if you're doing with melted butter, but you're doing with oil. There we go. That's all it is. Now, I have got the chicken stock. Now, what I've got is one cube of chicken of, of chicken stock. I've used it's use a cube because it's perfectly all right. This time you don't have to make it yourself, you can just use a bought cube. 
this is why it's good because it's got the salt in there which is what we're really what we're after so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this here and we're going to add everything together in a minute so we'll add this roux we're now going to cut up the tomatoes so we've got these tomatoes here and what i'm going to do is cut these in half okay so we're going to cut the pips out that like that there we go i'll just cut this in half as you know i always like to do i always like to do things actually here we are all in one go as you all know so we're going to do that continue doing that here we are and now take this off there we go and this is quite a good way anyway when you're doing a tomato concasse or anything like that so now the reason i'm doing this is because those who haven't got a food processor or liquidizer i think it's better to know how to do it by hand rather than do it by in a machine otherwise i would just i would just cook it and bung the whole thing now what i'm going to do is just cut it up like that into small pieces you don't have to do it all beautifully this is just cut up small that's all i'm doing oh yes you can see if you go to you yes if you do you go to the youtube channel you can see how to cut tomatoes but actually if you actually are going to put it through a processor you just roughly chop the tomatoes so yeah. this this is just this is just going through let me just go through this this is just going through cutting it small so we can cook it off and it will disintegrate a little bit i hope it disintegrates a little bit victoria has asked can you use vegetable stock yes you can use vegetable stock chicken stock any stock whatever stock you want it want it doesn't matter all right anything just one stock cube will be enough okay there we are very quick very easy you see how much easier it is when you actually do these things there we are and i'm, I'm doing it very roughly i'm not really caring how big the, the dice is i'm just doing it too as i said to help the cooking of the whole thing right we're now going to to go down there we go so two tomatoes in we go right now we're going to pick this up and i'm going to now put bring this forward i'm now going to do this bring this in here there we go perfect right now i'm going to pop this on so what i'm going to do is put this on to boil now in here depends how chilly is you want your tomato your tomato ketchup so basically i'm going to put a little bit of chilli can well, sorry, just why did you throw away the pips from karen well you could i i only threw away the pips because what i'm going to i've done it for people who do not have a food processor if you have a food processor you don't have to throw any of it away so basically i'm trying to help people who don't have equipment at home but if you have you just put it into a processor and whiz it all up okay um, quickly, uh, a couple of questions Yep, far away. Uh, water is the, uh, 200 mils. 200 mils. And also, um, where does the stock cube go? Oh, just put it in. Into the, into the stock. Into the water. Right, in we go. Now we're just going to take that. Actually, I'm going to take it off because I'm going to grate it. Now. And in the pan so far? What's in the pan so far? In the pan is just two tomatoes. Two tomatoes. You should have stock. Well, it's just one stock cube. 200 mils of um 200 mils of the actual um uh, water or you know that's it 10 mils of water just use water if you want um and then that's that's it okay just 200 mils of water one stock cube and that's it i'm actually looking for my grater have you got have you seen my little that's what i'm looking for perfect you see i just have to ask now i'm putting in some garlic i'm just going to I'm just going to do it now i haven't if you can see i haven't actually there we are i haven't actually cut it up i'm only doing this i wouldn't bother to do this if i was putting it in the processor obviously bung it all in but the trick is you must what you must do here we go here we are and again i think we've got this just 
I would say, like, what's in the pan? I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Right. All the ingredients that is on your tomato ketchup ingredients. So that is so far. I've put in 20 grams of flour and done 20 grams of oil. That's in your recipe. Put that together and made it into a roux. Now I'm going to put it, I've put in the garlic. I've put in a little bit of, I'm going to put in, which is not in the recipe, this is seasoning. I'm going to put some sugar, four teaspoons of sugar. One, two, three, four. Right, I'm now going to put in some salt because this is all seasoning. So we're going to put in a teaspoon of salt, not too much. There we are. It's actually more of a pinch than a teaspoon. Whoopsie. Now I'm going to put in this lovely bit of roux that I've made. So I'm going to bung this in. There we are. Pop that all in. Make sure it's all going. Now, the next thing is to put in your tomato puree. Okay. Tomato puree. Right now, you've got about, you have about two tablespoons, but I'm going to just put, I'm going to do a bit by feel. I'm probably going to put a bit more than that. So I will take the spoons here. So if you can watch me on here. Okay. One, two, a bit more, three. Let's just have a look. There we go. Really do that. Now, that's got to simmer. That's got to simmer because I want the tomatoes to simmer. Let me just taste it. Oh, yum. The taste for the same. Hang on. Put that in there. I'm going to just wait for the tomato puree now. Okay. It might need a bit more salt. I'm going to put a bit of lemon juice in there. So now the lemon juice is going in. Okay, so I'm just going to put it in. So just quickly, uh, Chef. Oh, no, not that Half a lemon. Right. Can you, can you use uh, mixed uh, coloured tomatoes or just red ones? No, fine, you can do coloured tomatoes. But the reason I use red ones is because now it's quite, let me show you guys. It's quite thick. So what I need to do is I need to thin that out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, again, this is by looking. I'm going to put a little bit of water in there. I'm going to show you just a little bit. Now, I want you to see this because this can happen. It didn't happen last time, but it's happened this time. I'm going to put a little bit of water just to loosen it off. There we are. because otherwise it'll go too thick, okay? But you want it that thickness. But it's just I've put, I've put in the um, tomatoes without pureeing them, so I want them to soften off. So that's it. So now we're gonna see, we're gonna taste it. Um, Yum. Sorry, we, we have a very important, would you mind, look, we have a, from, from, uh, from Sarah Calcutt, very fast for small girls at the moment. <laughs> yes, okay. To keep up. No, absolutely right. Sarah, we, have a recap. we will have a recap. Right. So what we've done is here, what we've done here is, can they hear me? I'm just stirring this in. Sorry, I'm just going to stir this. Right. Okay. There we are. Oh, my God. That's going to be so delicious. Right. Recap, what have I just done? I put 200 milliliters of um, water into a pan, one stock cube. I took 20 grams of flour and 20 grams of oil and made it into a roux. Then I added two large tomatoes and I took the liquid out of the tomatoes, hence why I had a bit of water in because it's not going into a processor. So basically, I'm trying to help those who don't have a processor. Now what's going to happen is, but if you have a processor, 
the tomato will make it lighter, okay? So what's going to happen? I put some sugar in, sweeten it off a little bit, and some salt. I also put some cayenne into it, but that's depending on how much you want. You can have anything you like. It doesn't matter what you've got, all right? So basically, that's it. Now I'm going to let you catch up for a minute. So just before we go any further, so we've got some questions coming in. far away. Um, how long will the ketchup stay fresh if you put it in? The oh, for, a, for about at least two weeks. At least two weeks. Mm -hmm. Now, what you can do is add a little, if you it can last longer, if you put it into a bowl, you have a little bit of oil over the top so it stops it to oxidize. You can keep it for longer. And also we have a question from... Yes, the answer is I've just said yes. Absolutely. Now, there we go. So, we've done that. Now, I want you just to look. Can you please go on to the. Um... Well, let's go. Is, is, is Sarah, Sarah, is Sarah um, feeling better? Sarah. Sarah, you... Sarah, Sarah, are you feeling a bit better? How are the children doing? I'll, I'll wait until they're done. How are they doing? There's no hurry, guys. Absolutely no hurry. Did right. you skin the tomato? No, I didn't. No, because what would have done is, there we are, now it's looking, now it's going to cook off the tomatoes a little bit, which is what I'm after. Can you see that, please? Okay, can you see that? Good. Okay, now the tomatoes are still bit, that's why I had to cut them quite small. Now, if I was putting it into a processor, maybe I will put it into a processor, but not yet. I want to be able to do it for those who don't have a processor. I'm trying to be thoughtful because not everybody has one. Now, okay, let's carry on. That's cooking away. We should be cooking. How long, how long do you cook the ketchup for? Oh, you're going to do it now for about five to ten minutes. Depends. I'm going to have a look at it. So I'm just going to leave it there while I carry on. You've got to have it, guys, you've got to have it on a really low heat. The reason being is because you do not want it to burn on the bottom. So you need it on a low heat. And if you think it's getting too thick, just add a little water to it. That's all you have to do. Now, okay, let's start off with the slaw. Thank you. Okay, now, first of all, I need to ask as many people as possible if they've already done the cabbage, because that's important. <laughs> have they been shredded? Has your cabbage, have you shredded it? That's all I wanted you to do, is shred the cabbage. Have you? <laughs> okay. Okay. Have you got a few people? Are you shredding your cabbage? Thumbs up. Okay, I've got to give it a little, they're telling me to give it a little bit of time. Right, here, I did some cabbage yesterday. Well, not yet, so there is someone, Amanda hasn't done it. Okay, Amanda, all right, Amanda. Well, I tell you what, we will wait for a couple of minutes, not a problem, while you shred your cabbage. Um, if you want to, this is only an idea, if you feel it's going to take you too long, if you think it is, what you can do is maybe get everything else ready in your bowl, everything else apart from the cabbage, and then add it afterwards. If you want to do it that way, if you feel it might hold, hold you up. I'm going to give you a bit of time. Now I'm just going to now keep stirring the, keep stirring the, what's the name? The, say what's the name? The lovely tomato sauce. Can you see that? It's coming beautifully. Look at that. Look at that. What's so lovely at this about this is it's it's homemade. It's homemade. It's gorgeous. You know what's gone. It goes an awful long way. You can do half the quantity. You don't have to do that much. Quite a lot, isn't it? Doesn't matter. Anyway, so um, so what I think I'm going to do is. A lot of people are doing thumbs up, so it might just be that one. Person. Okay. Look, if it's the one person, Amanda, don't worry, because after we finished. You can then finish it off in your own time, but you can do everything else now, okay? So the next thing is we're going to start. So these are my two cabbages, which I've done. We're going to start now chopping up the ingredients, basically. So we've got our spring onion. Now, I like to see the spring onion, so I'm going to... There we are. Perfect. 
Uh, let's do Amanda's three. Good news, Amanda has finished. I repeat, Amanda. What? Amanda? That was very quick. How big? How big are your? How big are your actual uh, things? God, that was so quick. I'm impressed. Salute you. I salute you. Right. Okay. Now, just is, take. Is, so we had an interesting question from Steve Lloyd, actually. Yes. Okay. Um, he has asked. Steve has asked. Um, is chili sauce the same method as ketchup? Um. Yes, it depends. It can be. It can be. But with a chili sauce, what I do is I do tend to process it definitely at the end. So basically, yes. But then, of course, it's chilies. I use a red pepper. I use tomato. And yes, it is. But not done. I don't do it with the corn flour. I mean, with the um, flour, because you don't need it. So basically, just making sure, please make sure it doesn't burn on the base. I'm just going to turn it down. Right, but that's a very good question. Whoopsie, that's a very good question. Right, here we go. Now, I'm going to cut these onions up, swing onions. Scallions, as they're called in America. Have we got anybody from America on it? Uh, yes, we've got someone from California. Oh, hi, who's from California? Who's there? Right, hi from California. How wonderful is that? There we go. Right, now, we've got these lovely, I, I love these, I really do love these um, radishes. They're so nice. So you just cut those finely, which is so nice. Or if you find it easier, oh, what have I just done? If you find it easier, just cut it in half there. And you're on a flat. Look, there we go. So then they won't go anywhere now. Okay. So if we go here, we go in here. So basically that's how we do it. There we go. So basically come round. Right. Okay. Again. Okay. Again. Go round. Now. Hope you're chopping away. I love radishes, they're so delicious. I really do. I love also pickling radishes, they're so yummy. We've got Katie from Seattle saying good morning. Oh, hi, Katie. Yes, it is good morning for you. Hi, how are you? So good to see you. Thank you so much. I'm sure you were on last time. That's so nice to hear you. And they're saying very much that scallions is also called that in the northeast. Oh, is it? Do you know, I never knew that. Tell him he can come through, Martin. Okay. 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 So what we'll do is, um, there we are. I'll take this. Perfect. Now, we're on to the apple. Perfect. In. Round. Okay. Apple. Here we go. How lovely is this? There we go. Perfect. That's pretty simple, isn't it? There we go. Okay. Easy peasy, all right? Really easy. Perfect. Now, this is the easy way to do it. If you do if you do things in a certain way it really doesn't take long it really it's a very quick way of doing it. so i hope you're either all chopping around or chopping there we go now perfect there we go right now next thing take that okay right here we go parrot right what i've got is here I'm going to peel the carrot, but what I'm going to do to this carrot is, peel it, I'm going to use this little gizmo, and if you haven't got this little gizmo, don't panic, because it doesn't matter, but it's quite useful, if you go like this, <laughs> look at that, <laughs> see that's cool, right, so we're going to do that, just makes so much life so much easier. otherwise you can just chop it up 
just be careful you don't hurt your fingers because actually it's actually quite dangerous to be honest with you got to be quite nice. i might just go half in fact i'm going to take that off that's really dangerous so oh, maybe i like that and now i'm going to do this because otherwise i think it's just too dangerous anyway i don't want you lot taking off your fingers no that wouldn't be very nice would it and then you're blaming me right so there we are oh. <laughs> i can't be bothered to do anymore there we go that's fine that's enough right okay so we're going to do that all right here we go so now right this is where it gets interesting we're going to put in and i'm going to use this little bowl actually we're going to put in let me just clean up first are there thumbs up before we start this part are they are they thumbs up please can we have thumbs up thumbs up and also i've got to do this too thumbs up well, I think they're, all, they're chopping. Are you chopping? Well, we'll, we'll wait for you to be chopped, finish chopping, because this is the fun part. Chop, chop. I love chopping. I can chop forever. Okay. I think the carrot, uh, explaining the carrot chopping is very interesting. Oh, really? Well, okay. Well, it's just, I, I'm very worried about people's, um, people's hands, because, uh, you could get very easily, oh, you can get very easily carried away. I'm going to just put this, do the, I'm just going to put this bit of garlic in here. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to just check my tomato. That tomato looks ready to me. Looks really, really good. There you are, garlic in there. Right, let's just check this tomato sauce. I hope you lot are keeping checking so it's not burning. Oh my gosh, my tomato sauce is looking perfect, actually. Spot on. Except, funny enough, because I put some water in it, it needs to thicken up even a little bit more. So, does the, ke does the ketchup need to be, um, Toya has asked, does the ketchup need to be uh, on, on a low heat? Or? Yes, a low heat. Otherwise, it's going to burn. So, please be very, very careful. It's going to burn. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you plenty of time, don't worry. You just please enjoy it. Enjoy. How, how much garlic went in? Two cloves of garlic. Right, I'm now going to put in three tablespoons of oil. I'm putting rapeseed oil. This is our local rapeseed oil, which is actually really important to use. Now, don't forget the little trick of doing... The lemon like that it makes it easier to deal with so lemon cut off the ends like that cut off the middle like that right now okay this is the bit so we're going to now squeeze lemon in here okay there'll be about three to four tablespoons which is what you need because you want to be able to stop the apple from going brown you need it acidic so you'll keep it in the fridge it'll keep for longer so it's that sweetness as well now i'm going to make sure i've got really plenty so it's quite lemony which is what i'm looking for as i said there we go so keep going there we go i might as well just use this one too perfect Look, you can see that. Look at that. Lots and lots of lemon. Now, what I'm going to do, I would normally put it into a bit of a shaker, to be honest with you, at that point. Um, sorry to come in, Jeff. Uh, Jane, I don't know, um, has come in a bit late. So no, that's all right. Good time to just, just could you, would you mind all be going through the tomato ketchup? Not at all. Right, with the tomato ketchup, what I did was I put in 200 mils of water one stock cube i then put in um i two garlic cloves i put in um three tablespoons two three tablespoons of uh, tomato puree i put in some uh tomato puree uh, oh, some cayenne pepper some half a lemon 
a bit of sugar, about three, three dessertspoons of teaspoons of sugar, three to four, uh, three if they're rounded. I mean, three if they're rounded, four if they're flat. Then I put in a little bit of seasoning, not too much. And now what I'm doing is I'm literally just simmering it down because I also put in two tomatoes. Now, normally I would put this in the processor. Oh, oh no, look what I've just done. That's me getting excited. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Look, that's just typical. You know, I have to do something, don't I? Every week there is something that I'm... What am I going to get wrong today? Okay, never mind. So we're going to do that. Right, so i better clear that up actually first. Let me... Yes? Why would you use lemons over limes? <laughs> because lime is um, a totally different... It's a different acidity, and also you get more juice out of a lemon as well. You'd have to use a lot more lime. I mean, you could do, it's fine, but you'd have to do a lot more. You'd have to use a lot more because they're smaller. That's all. But otherwise, if you've got more limes, use limes. It doesn't matter. Use limes, okay? Right now, okay, guys? That's just so typical of me. Right, now, I need to, at this point, because what I want to do before I do that, I need to get, I had one of these kilner things. Tell you what, I'm going to put it in here. Because I really need to get this together. Right. So it's really together. Here we are. Right now, I need to now get this coriander. Right, you can use parsley, coriander, it doesn't matter what. Just use anything you like. But actually, I like to use the stalks as well because the stalks have so much flavour. They really do. All I'm going to do is this. So use the stalks too. Go down with the stalks. It's beautiful. Perfect. Now just throw that little lot away. But otherwise, it's all going. So we're now going to pop this in here. So we've got... Let's just recap what we've got in here. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> keep clearing up. You have to keep clearing up as you go along. I'll give you time to clear up before we get on to the next bit. Sorry, quick question. Has, has the garlic um, gone into the lemon dressing? Yes, it has. What I did was I actually put it in. I actually put it in with the cabbages and the carrot because I wasn't thinking. But that's what happens. So I did it. Yes, it's all there. I can pull it out if you want, just to show you, but it is all there. Now, here's everything. Apple, cabbages, it's all here. Now, what's going to happen to it? It's going to go down. It's going to basically, there we are, help it to really develop. Now, it's not going to ferment because it hasn't got enough stuff in there to start fermenting. But what it has got, it's got that sort of lemony, which will get it, make it better by tomorrow, it will infuse it. It will sweeten sour it with the sugar as well. It will help it and really get it. What I want you to do is this. The oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. So what I really need here is I need to make sure it's really in there. You have to keep going with it because, and if you think it needs a bit more salt, which it probably does, so I'm going to go like this because the salt will help it as well. You need far more salt. You see, what I'm doing is, this is sour, it's sweet, it's got everything in here. Now I'm gonna put in some sugar, so it's the sweet and sour. Keep going with it. Okay, so which adds it. I use sweetness for the actual, for the, for the tastings, for the development of the flavor. So you use, so you use salt, you use sweetness, and lemon and that brings it all together now what i'm going to do and what will happen is it will work its magic and it will go down by tomorrow when you eat this now by tomorrow it will develop and it will be a lot a lot less so keep going now i need to taste it this way you you have to taste a flavor all right so you can't oh you um that is delicious. 
I'm no, the cumin. <laughs> oh, do you know, Martin's just reminded me about the cumin. I thought there was something missing. Okay. Can I have that big jar down there, do you think? <laughs> Please. No, I'm just going to put it straight in. I want to put it straight into the jar. Thank you. I want to put it straight into the jar if I can. Thank you. So I have a little thing that I want to get in here. It's down here somewhere. Oh, my drawers. I can't bear my drawers. Oh, oh no, I want to close them. Can't bear looking at my drawers. Right. Okay. That's it. <laughs> okay. So we're going to make sure. Actually, see, there's me. Look how much it's gone down already. That is just from the lemon, the sugar, the salt. It's disintegrating it all. Look, it'll get smaller and smaller. Are you having questions, actually? Far away. Uh, regarding, if we could just slow down a touch, which is yep. um, uh, about the dressing. I think people would like to have a repeat of the dressing for the small. Right. Three tablespoons of oil, rapeseed oil or olive oil. Three tablespoons of lemon juice, but I used about four. I used more. Two garlic cloves. Also, I use sugar, about, about three dessert spoons of sugar. I also used um, salt to get it to the right seasoning, so it's salty. I'm going to push this down. This needs to be pushed down. Okay. Could you use fruit juice instead of sugar? Uh, yes, you can use a bit of fruit juice. Absolutely fine. But remember, you need to find that sweetness from somewhere. Right, there's my slaw ready, which will last for a while, a good week. Yeah. Can you use olive oil? Uh, yes, you can use olive oil rather than weight seed oil. Now, what you're going to do, I'm going to clear up first. Okay, look, there you go. Can you see that, everybody? Right. Now, let me just clear up before we go any further, because that is a messy, messy job. That's thank you. That's a messy, messy, messy job. But I'm going to put that into a smaller bowl. So if you could. Now let me just do this. That was fun. Now, if you're doing things like sauerkraut, sauerkraut, which is done the same sort of way, and I do it with white wine, you leave it overnight, you leave it to ferment, you leave it to do its own thing. And it's amazing what you can do. It really is. It's a bit of a longer process than that, but it's good, it's good fun to do. But when you do all these, I'm going to, I'm seriously going to get into this, um, this curing and so on, because I think, I think we are, it's important. And this is what we all brought up with. And they're just now bringing back, which is very exciting for me. I love it. There we go. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, here we go. So if we bring this round, there we are. That was really messy, guys, but there's nothing else you can do. I'm going to give you time to clear up, so don't worry. I'm not going to just carry on and fright them because you need time. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to clear up when I see my board. Yes, I couldn't find my board. My thing is ready now. Right. Right, okay, so let's look at this. This is my tomato ketchup. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. Can you see that? Now, it will go firmer. Obviously, as it cools down, it's a bit soft at the moment, but obviously, when it reduces, it has reduced quite a lot. Can you see that? Look. Yeah, it's looking really nice. Now let me just taste it. Dare I say. Yum. Yum, 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 yum. Okay. Now, fine. Now, I hope we're going to get lots of pictures sent in through this week. I really want to see all your slaw or your stuff because I think it's such a nice thing to do. And it's totally different from using mayonnaise because if you use mayonnaise, what happens? It doesn't. It's not the same to if you're using acid, salt, and sugar. Because acid, salt, and sugar, it sort of develops themselves. It's all a matter of science. It's a science. 
and um, it's getting it right. So that's why this is so useful to do. But also, it's really healthy as well. Now, um, Chef, can we just let people try and find cumin because cumin wasn't in, in the recipe, the original recipe. Oh, I thought it was in the ingredients. Oh. I thought it was. It was in the ingredients. I thought. Ah, oh, Martin's saying it might have been him. He might have left that. No, fine, plenty of time. Plenty of time. I'm actually going to take that while, yeah, while we're waiting. I'm going to take this bit of tomato sauce and I'm going to put it in a bowl. Because now what happens with this sauce, you really need, you really need to let it cool down. There we are. Is that perfect? Because, as I said, it's too soft at the moment, but oh, it's, I tell you what, it's so nice. There we go. All right? Perfect. Right now. Okay, so we've done our store. Just, uh, how much cumin do they need to add? About two teaspoons, three teaspoons, four teaspoons, however much they want. Well, I know, but it doesn't matter. I think I put in about two teaspoons worth, but it's whatever you fancy. Ta what I would suggest you do is taste it, all right, and just see what it's like, and then you can decide for yourself, all right? So that's cool. Now, I think that's looking so pretty. Let me look at that again. I think, look, so pretty, I'll put it behind. Look, that was so worth it. Look, okay. Can you see that? Doesn't that look good? Doesn't that look pretty? Have that, but you, you have to keep it in the fridge. That's the only thing. You can't leave it out just on the shelf unless you add vinegar to it, more vinegar and stuff than you can, but otherwise don't. It's not like that. <laughs> right, okay. Now we're on to the exciting bit, the burgers. Okay, let's just talk about burgers for a minute. I'm going to sit down while you all... Sorry, we have a very interesting uh, question, which is, could you advise when we've got about 20 minutes left, 30 minutes, because so, uh, Katie is making homemade chips. Oh, my goodness me! Are you going to have your supper now? Okay, that's that's amazing. All right. Should she crack on then? With her chips? Uh, what, what time is it now? 5.40. Crack on with your chips. <laughs> yes, I never say the word crack on. Oh, it's not me, is it? It's not me. Now, okay, what are we going to do? We're going to now, is it thumbs up for you all now? Can you put thumbs up? Do they need the oven on for the burger? They certainly do. I think whoever said that, thank you. <laughs> that was Ermin True. Ermin Trude, you're a star. Thank you very much. Because things always go wrong with me, as you know. So I either forget to put the oven on, or I go and do that, or I go do that. Right, okay. Now, I cut up this by hand. 180. 180. I put that up by hand. Now, are you with me? I hope you are. You with me? Yes? You're with me? Are you all with me? Yeah? Okay. So let's just go with it. So now we've got this, we're nearly, we're on the, we're on the home ground, the home ground, we're getting in there. I'm actually going to, first of all, also, I'm going to put my pan on. Now, can I just say one thing? I'm not going to, I'm just going to cook. I'm going to cook four, but I'm going to cook, um, I'm going to cook them later as well. I've got some to cook later because I'm not sure I'm going to feel like eating um, straight away. So what we'll do is I'm going to give lovely, lovely, they're all waiting for these hamburgers. Martin's waiting like mad. Do you know what? I was suggested to Martin today. I might ask him on to cook. Do you think it's a good idea? It would be quite interesting Brilliant to us. Idea. I, think, <laughs> I think it'd be quite cool, wouldn't it? Right. I think it'd be really good to have Martin on. Tell me how many people want Martin to come and cook with me. We have a, we have a very good question. What's the way? Um, which is sometimes when preparing chicken, yes. a lot of the time the chicken has veins in it. Yes, you remove... Is, is that bad for you? No, 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 no. It's just not very nice. It can be... The veins come, the veins come from the... Um, uh, 
there's a sort of fillet at the bottom. And there's this sort of fiber in which you really need to remove because it's tough and it doesn't break down during cooking. It's a bit of a bore. Otherwise, you can do virtually anything. What I do, what I tend to do is I tend to actually cut off the sides where there's a little, always a little bit where it's held onto the leg. So I actually take it and I just cut it all off and I basically, um, uh, yeah, I just cut that off so it's nice. So you need it. So the thing is, you need it all fresh and everything here. So now what we're going to do, we're going to put one egg yolk in there. I'm also going to put a couple of garlic in here. Oh, this is going to be so great. Now, what I'm going to do is fry it and then put it in the oven for 10 minutes. So those who's baking the chips, you can shove these two in the oven. So, yeah. Now, Madras curry powder. Oh, wow. I think this lot, I think Martin will like it quite hot, actually. I have a feeling. Yeah, I think he does like his spice. So, Martin, I'm going to give you a one, two, <laughs> three. That'll grow hairs on his chest, won't it? Right, okay. Now, now we're, <laughs> now we're into this. So basically, I'm now going to take, grate this. Now, the reason I'm grating it and on a coarse grater is because it gets it to exactly where I want it. Otherwise, if it's diced, I have to cook it off. So this is fine to be able to leave it in and not to have to cook it. Here we are. Right, so take that off. Half an onion, because it was quite a big onion. Right, now this is the fun part, seasoning. Oh, first of all, before seasoning, I better put in my parsley, actually. Okay, here we go. Again, yes? Okay, in the bowl, there's half an onion, grated. There's um, chicken breast, 750 grams of chicken breast. I think it's probably 800 there because I think I rounded it up in my butchers. Right. Then there's, um, yep, what else? Uh, um, garam, uh, not garam masala, uh, madras and two garlic. That's all. And now there's parsley, handful of parsley. That's a good handful of parsley, actually, because I, I like the parsley. I like these when they're white and they come really, you can see the parsley and everything. It's really nice. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. The only thing to do, and if you want to do this, is by hand. Now, if you want to put a pair of gloves on, put a pair of gloves on, but I'm going to do this. Right. To find out if you season this enough. What you've got to do is you've got to make a little parsley. You've got to make a little patty. So, I've been putting a little question because uh, we've uh, probably my fault. I put um, parsley on, on that bowl. So I think you've done coriander in the slaw and parsley in the parsley. We've, we've, we've done it all. Well, it doesn't matter. You know, the thing about the thing about me when I cook. You know, you don't want to make it so rigid that you can't get anywhere. Then it becomes a headache and you think, oh my goodness me, I haven't done that correctly. Well, I've done that. I'll tell you a little story. Uh, there were two bottles of wine. It just shows you this is before I knew much about wine. And I was cooking in the most delicious lamb dish. So I decided, my husband had bought these bottles. I think we were in Cornwall. And I decided to use a bottle of wine in the cooking. So I took the bottle of wine. And he got back and he saw I had used a very expensive bottle of wine and left the cheapo to drink. <laughs> well, I said, tough, it doesn't matter, tough, who cares? Right, to find up if there's enough salt in here. Okay, so we're nearly, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. So I need to just, before I do anything, wash my hands again. You notice I'm always washing my hands. Always, always, but that's what you have to do. Right, there we are. Now I'm gonna put some oil in here. I'm gonna take a bit, uh, just to test whether there's enough seasoning in there. Okay, I'm not going to advise you to have raw chicken. 
just let that go for a minute. It's just to test to make sure it's good enough. I'm just going to clean my board now. There we are. Perfect. Clean, clean, clean. Keep yourself clean if you can, as much as possible. Right. Okay. Now, I have to tell you, I have made some of this. I did make some earlier. Now, it, sorry, question. Is there any salt in the burger mix? Oh, yes, there is. And that's why I'm testing to see if there's enough salt in there. This is me making a patty. Just enough salt to make sure. There we are. So I'll taste that. Do you think you should just recap on, on the bowl? The burger, yes. The so what I've done is I've done chicken breasts. Cut it all up very finely by hand. It was very simple. How I did it was, let me explain. I cut the chicken in half horizontally. I then rolled it up, sliced it, then cut it again. Then went fine, perfect. And I think it's better almost than mincing it. Right, I then, I'm going to put this here on one of these. Okay. Okay, there we go. Just to see if it's all right. Now, while that's... I'm just going to put that there. Just going to test it. Okay, just going to test it for me. I think I could do with more. So, I'm going to do that. It's surprising how much it can take. Right, there you are. So, I think I'm probably going to do even a bit more. There we are. So, now um, we have turkey mince. That's fine, turkey mince is fine. Perfect. Right, now what I'm going to do this Any is the recommendations on how much salt for turkey mix? Would you need more? Probably the same. It's be exactly the same. I mean, you know, I'm just going to do this. Oh, perfect. I put in a good teaspoon, two teaspoons in there. Right now. So what's going to happen? Here, yeah, I'm going to show you. Gonna... How high should the stove be for frying? Medium. I've got that on a small one. Medium. It's all going up there a little bit. Right. I'm now going to take some flour. So I need you. Base... Sorry. Sorry, I'm finally, Chef. How much curry powder do they need? Sorry. In this... You can put as much as you like. I will put, if you want to put two rounded teaspoons, try that. And if you feel it's not strong enough, put three rounded teaspoons. I've made it because Madras is quite strong. And there are people here who actually love spicy food. So basically, I'm going for it. Now, I'm just going to do this. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of flour around here. I've got a ring. Now this is going to be divided into four. Okay, so it's now these are big and they're meant to be big. Okay. Now you can make five out of it easily if you want. Or maybe we will. Or maybe we will. Maybe they're a little bit too big. Yeah, that's all right. Do whatever you want. Right now, what I'm going to do is put this in here, push it down, put my hand in the flour. Again, washing my hands. Now, hands into flour. So it goes down, really goes down. And then once it's done, okay. I take off like that. All right. Now I'm on to the next one. Push down, push down, push down. Next one. Now, obviously, you're not going to be as quick as this. So I'll wait. Here we are. Uh, we're getting great thunders here. We really are. There we go. Push down, 
How easy is this? There we are. Right now. Oopsie. I, was <laughs> and I tried to take off quickly. Okay. There we are. See how quick it is. And yet, these are good burgers. These really are great burgers. So I'll probably now, final one. Final one, I'll put a bit more on there. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now, once you've done that, now you can either cook them, which I think oh, I probably, I, because I, I think I probably should cook the ones I've done here. Otherwise, you'll think that I can't cook the ones I did yesterday. I mean, that is to say you can't cook the ones, so it's a bit mean of me. So I think I'm going to have to cook these because it's not fair otherwise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut... So I don't move it anymore. I'm going to cut this. Because to move it off will spoil it. Okay. Ah. So if I take one at a time. So I'm going to put this in. Pop it on here. And I'm going to put it in my hand here. And slide it on. Okay, same thing. It's just because they are so soft and so big, I just don't want to ruin them. And by doing it like this, it's much better. On, on, on. Again. If, you, if they're eating the burgers later, should they pause now? Definitely. Definitely pause. In fact, I'm going to push these to one side. I'm going to take these now. I've got, let me just show you what I've got here. I did these yesterday. Now, they always go a different color the day before, but it doesn't matter. Look, I made these yesterday. Beautiful burgers. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put these on top of there. Because there's no point in doing them yet. Right. So let's put three in for the moment. Good amount. Clear up. While they're cooking, just clear up. Be patient. Now, the thing about this, everybody, is what I'd like to do is just make sure. Don't touch it. Please don't touch it. Because what you don't want to do is break the seal. Could, could you barbecue rather than pan fry? Yes, you can barbecue. Without that, without question, you can barbecue. They'll be, different. but if you're barbecuing them, please make sure. I'm just going to take this out, so it's all off. Please make sure that you actually have. Thank you. Make sure that you've got everything. It's solid. So I prefer if you're going to barbecue to have it on something flat or something like. Or make sure they're rested. Otherwise. They, they, they could break up. Is baking, is baking paper the same as parchment paper? No, baking paper is when it has a little bit of wax over it. So it's not quite the same, no. I mean, par sorry, baking sheets, a baking sheet is a not, a parchment paper is when you have wax over it. So that's it. There we go. Now, patience is a virtue. Okay, so this is so exciting. Right, I made, I have to tell you, I made some tomato sauce yesterday, which is delicious. Okay, look at that. It's absolutely yummy. There you go. Now, I also made, I'm going to put the cold slaw. Uh, I'll put the one I made today if you want. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to put a little bit of cold slaw on here. So we'll take all this. There we go. 
Oh, I tell you what, this is quite delicious. So that's just that's delicious. Why is the oven on if we're frying them? Well, we're not. We're going to put them in the oven, finish them in the oven. Right now. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to now. Okay, we're going to now, in a minute, turn these around. Not yet, though. Then I'm going to put them in the oven for about for about uh, 10 minutes, 5 minutes. Right, here we go. They're all hanging on. I need to take this. They're all hanging on. This is the one we made earlier. It's thickening. Look, everybody, but I'm not going to use it because it needs to cool down. Tomato, lettuce, okay? Ah, we are going to have to go there. We are going to have to go there, okay? Right. Not yet. Not yet. Rolls. Look. Okay. Thing is to be aware of not being quite. Would you still put them in the oven? Oh yes, I'm going to. Ah, yes, I would. I'm just trying to look for my. Uh, where is the spatula? My. Boom. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I can't believe it. It was here. Okay, guys, this is it. We're turning it over. Ready? Can we look at it, please? Always two. Always two. Never one. Okay. There we go. Off we go. Okay. Now, keep them low. It must be low. I would, yes. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? They've got a lovely crust on them as well. They've got a beautiful crust. Right now, we're going to take a roll. I'm just going to show you one so you can do the rest on your own. Right. That looks wonderful, doesn't it? Can you see everybody? Can you see what it looks like? I hope so. Is it thumbs up? Okay, this is quite frankly delicious. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this like that. Just go around. Let's see. Because it's now what's happened is, okay, let me explain about the science of this. What's happened is the protein has solidified. So I couldn't have done that before. I couldn't have picked it up like that. But what has happened is it's solidified and it's enabled me to work with it. So that's all you have to do. And that's why you've got to leave it at the beginning. So what I'm going to do now is take this, pop it in here, like this. I'm going to now finish it in the oven. Hmm? Sorry? Why do they, why do you finish them in the oven? Because they're not quite cooked. And the one thing you've got to make sure, it's not like beef. You must make sure it's totally cooked through. So I never do that with my beef um, ones. I only ever do it with the chicken or turkey, one or the other, because it's, it's a different meat. So it's a different sort of protein. Now, what I'm going to do, which is not very PC, I do know, I'm going to take the inside of this and I'm going to put it on a really high heat very, very quickly. So I'm just almost doing a fried toast. Um, how long in the oven? Just for five minutes. Right, a bit of fried toast. Now, this is probably not PC and I know it's not. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. I've got to get this hot. I just want it to tinge over the outside. So what I'm looking for is real richness and real, real richness and also real sort of, uh, you just want to get in there and eat it. And this, the whole look of it will show. Now, let's get on. So tomato. We're obviously going to have our sliced tomato with it. So now we're going to take, I'm just going to do one because, you know, and then I'll have to do the others later. Now, so basically, which you will probably end up doing. I've got some nice lettuce here. Look, it's this gorgeous lettuce. Nice lettuce. Leave it whole. It's a nice little gem. All right. 
Right, so this is nearly done now. Nearly ready, patience. There we are. Look, there's the inside. Perfect. Now, so it's like a, you know what? It's like a crisp bed. Now, before I use this, before I use this again, I'm going to have to clean it out because that will burn the hamburgers next time I put some more in, which I will do in a minute, but I'm not going to put it in until this is done. Here we go again. Here we go again. Right. Okay. Another one. <laughs> Does it go off? <laughs> okay. We've got tea towels going. we got uh, windows going. We've got tea towels, windows. Oh, it's going. Right. That's it. Now we've got, it's cut, this has come off, the uh, grease book has come off. Right, okay, so we're, nearly, <laughs> so we're nearly ready. Right, do you see that? Doesn't that look lovely? So I think what I'm going to do is put, so that's ready, a little bit of gorgeousness here, on here, that's the top, actually, that's the bottom. A little bit of gorgeousness there, why not? Oh. Now, then we're going to put the hamburger on the top. So we'll just get away. Now, you've got five minutes. I'm not going to rush this. Are there any questions? This is the moment before I get them out of the oven and finish doing it. Any questions? Yes. Any questions? This is your time. Please. Now, I'll talk about next week. Next week, we're going to be doing gammon. Now, what is delicious is i'm going to try and get a gammon about that thick okay so it's really yummy i'm going to serve it with a celeriac puree which is delicious which i love um pears which i love and i'll probably do some crispy celeriac as well so allow a little extra celeriac would be good um so that is really nice so it's all in season it's all lovely so we're going to do that um so that's gonna be very exciting as i said for mothering sunday we're going to do a Rhubarb and custard tart, absolutely delicious. I thought that would go down a treat for mums and, uh, and dads or anybody or the children. But they can all make it. So, as I said, I'm trying to now make sure that the recipes I choose for you all, it's all, it's all in keeping with the dates and what the dates are, because I didn't really think about it before. That was my own fault. Um, Suzanne asks a question. Mm -hmm. Can you refrigerate the burgers and then heat them up in the oven later for dinner? Yes, of course you can. Absolutely no props. If I, I was you, that's what I would do. I'd take them out and then heat them up so they're not quite cooked through. That's what I would do. So basically, you see, the thing with this is you can prepare it all and have it later for dinner because it is quite early still. So those who want to have dinner later, which is what we'll probably end up having at about 7.30, so you'll have, we'll have our hamburgers. And then... Um, Yep, you have it any time you like. So that'll be that'll be lovely. Okay, any time. That's the beauty of this. That's the beauty of it. Right. Okay. I think we're going to be nearly there. Let's have a look. Not quite. Not quite. We're nearly there. Patience is a virtue. That's the thing. Patience is a virtue. Have you enjoyed it? Is it thumbs up? Thumbs up? I hope so. Well, I think I'm, I'm really loving these cook-alongs. Really, really. Saturday night dinner. That's what it is. It's Saturday night dinner. It's so nice. It's such fun. And I've really enjoyed it. It's, it's, it's been great. Really great. So, um, and also I've had lovely support from all you guys mm -hmm. out there. It's been fantastic. So thank you so much for supporting me. And also there's some Seattle and and um, California and all around the world, which is fantastic. It means so much to me. So thank you very much indeed. I mean that. Thank you. Right. Okay. We'll be here. See, see, I'm getting impatient now. You can tell when I'm getting impatient. Um, question from Jackie. What temperature should the, the burgers be in the centre? Uh, 65 degrees at least. 65. 65 degrees. 65, 66 because it should continue to cook after it comes out okay but it should 
it should sometimes sometimes people say i want it at 70 70 degrees but i think it kills it at 70 but never mind but because it continues to cook and it will eventually it will go up to 68. um could we ask for pictures to be sent on email to martin please can we send yeah please can we send pictures please 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 because i want to see what you've all done i want to see your your slaw i want to see what you've managed to do and also i want to see your burgers i want to see what they're like so please send them in to me because it actually it actually is really, really quite exciting when it is and also connor connor i really want your address to send you your book for winning the toad in the hall we still haven't got it we need it we need it okay so it must be done by now. Come on, it must be done. Um, uh, we have uh, Anne, Anne Lees, who's a great regular. Right. Um, how long do burgers need to be in the oven? About five to ten minutes. It depended on, it depended on how long you cooked it on top. So really, I mean, for me, that's totally done. Uh, Anne, 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 is, uh, Anne is the mum of uh, Suki Boyfriend. Oh, really? Okay. That's a little bit of information. Okay, that's great. Right. Okay. So now, hello, Anne. Hello, Anne. Right. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to put a little bit of tomato ooh, sauce on top of this burger. So we're now going to put in some delicious lettuce. And also, we'll put some delicious tomato on the top. And then I think we're going to now, I think when... Oh, nice. um, what would you call gammon in the USA? Uh, oh, ha oh, uh, raw ham. Maybe I don't know. To be honest, to be honest, I'd never really thought about that. It's a good point. But what it is, gammon is is basically pork that is cured. All right. So that's all you have to do is you need some slices of pork from the leg that's cured. Right. Okay. Right. Now, there we are. We've got our lovely. A little bit more sauce. Oh, so we'll take this. Okay. So, can we also say thank you to our farm shop? I would like now, I was just about to talk about the farm shops. First of all, I would like to say a big thank you to the farm shops because they have been amazingly supportive. They have, they're around England. We're hoping we've got loads. We're hoping that we have got. We're hoping that we have got um, loads of people looking and watching and enjoying. Because what I'm trying, let me sit down for a minute, actually, because I want to tell you. What I'm actually really trying to do is support the local farmers and support the local farm shops. So people know what's in season. People know what is happening. It's so important. We need to understand, and by going to the local farm shops, then you can see what is actually in season and what is actually happening. And by doing it locally, you're also helping sustain the farmers. And we also got have a, a birthday girl, Imogen, who was 11 yesterday. Happy birthday, Imogen. Happy birthday. Well, I hope you're going to have these burgers for your supper tonight. Now, I'm just going to cut it. Okay. Just going to cut it through. And Trade Pole and Pen, the farm shop, shout out a big hello. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, my giddy on. Sorry. Oh, my gosh, that's perfect. A big hello to who from? Well, we look from a, 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 one of our fantastic farm shop. Um, what are their names, though? Trade Pole and Pen. Okay. Hello to Trade Pole and Pen, to all of you out there. I do hope that you've enjoyed it tonight, and I hope you're going to continue, because this is lovely. And I have to tell you that this, I've got to show you, and you've got to look at that. That is the most beautiful, beautiful hamburger. If you don't like it, I'd be shocked. Anyway, listen, everybody, I would like to say thank you so much for joining me tonight. And I hope you're going to see me next week um, doing my lovely gammon, celeriac, and uh, maybe crispy celeriac, and so on and so forth. So it'll be really nice. So um, have a great week. 
and we'll be posting all the ingredients. You'll be getting it. I think you've already got it at the farm shops, but then it'll be all on Monday. It'll be there to be seen. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great dinner. I know we are. So anyway, lots of love. See you soon. See you next week. Bye for now. One more. Oh, one more question. I've just oh, done, Imogen, yes, I've just done. Imogen, you're going to have two happy birthdays. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Imogen. Happy birthday to you. You've got the full thing then. Okay. But, oh, my thing's just gone. Okay, put it back on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take care. Bye for now. Bye.